Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. Welcome to Only What You Take With You. Presented by Page Turners They Were Not. My Star Wars podcast. Well folks, a bit of sad news. The legendary James Earl Jones has passed away at the age of 93. To most people, he will be remembered as the voice of Darth Vader. Um, But he did many, many, many other things as well, which has had an influence on multiple generations. You know, it's so interesting to me that James Earl Jones, who we all know as having an incredible voice, had a stutter, uh, which he worked very hard to overcome, though he still had it later in life. But um, one of the interesting things about it is that poetry and theater gave them the ability to speak very well. And, of course, as a result, one of the greatest voices in film, those of us who grew up in the 90s like I did, We'll always remember him as Mufasa in The Lion King. Um, one of the great father roles. And many of us as still never quite emotionally recovered from the death of Mufasa. Um... But let me talk really quick about the rest of his career. So James Earl Jones really began his career as a classically trained Shakespearean actor. One of his most famous performances is Shakespeare in the Park in New York City under the director Joseph Papp staged Othello by William Shakespeare in which James Earl Jones played the title role and blew everyone away. Uh, Later he would win the Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play in The Great White Hope, playing the real-life boxer Jack Johnson. After making the play in which he won the Tony Award, the play was adapted into a film, which earned James Earl Jones his only Academy Award nomination. Um, he was considered by many to be the king of American theater. Another one of these Tony Awards, which he won another Tony, in August Wilson's play Fences. And now I read that play in college. And it's an extraordinary work. And those of you might be familiar with the film that was made of Fences a few years ago. 
starring Denzel Washington in the title role. The gave many, many other memorable performances. Now, as far as film is concerned, he made his debut 60 years ago in Dr. Strangelove uh, in a small role as Lothar Zog, one of the guys in the crew of the B, B, uh, the bomber that uh, was piloted by Slim Pickens. Uh, so small role there. But then about 10 years later, he made a name for himself in the movie Claudine in 1974. But then, three years after that, came the big one. He was hired to provide the voice of Darth Vader in Star Wars in 1977. Three years later, he played him again in The Empire Strikes Back, which I would argue is really what made Vader the great villain of cinema history. And then, of course, those of you who might be fans of the 1982 film Conan the Bardarian, starring their young Arnold Schwarzenegger, the villain, Tulsa Doom, played memorably by James Earl Jones. This is a personal favorite of mine. I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said that I don't think the lead actors, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Stendhal Bergman, and Jerry Lopez, were necessarily great actors in that movie. But the saving grace of the film as far as its acting is concerned, is that James Earl Jones, Max von Sydow, and the great Nako were able to come into the film and provide some incredible dialogue scenes in a movie that otherwise doesn't have the best dialogue. And then, of course, the late 80s was another amazing time for James Earl Jones because he would then became rather famous for playing the king of Zamunda in Coming to America. Yes, King Jaffe Jafar. Uh, another great role with the... Uh, in a very silly movie, a great movie, James Earl Jones brings, as he always did, some degree of legitimacy the film. Now, a year later, after the the King of Zamunda, he played Terrence Mann in Field of Dreams with an incredible monologue near the end of that why baseball is so important. And then a year later, in one of my favorite films of all time, 
he played Admiral Greer in The Hunt for Red October. A marvelous performance. Um, a small role, but as always, James Earl Jones could take a small role, a small part in the movie, and make it very memorable. And of course, he was in the Sandlot. Which, yet again, kids of the 90s grew up with. And certainly, we remember him as the guy who owns the dog, the beast. Mr. Myrtle. Yes, the 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 insane imaginations of these kids thinking that this dog is some kind of giant beast. So we could go on and on about the performances that he has given. Whether it be roots or sneakers or even something less well known, like Cry the Beloved Country, James Earl Jones is, without a doubt, one of the finest actors in the history of American theater and American cinema. The as far as bringing Vader to life, there is no other voice, I think, that would have fit that character so well. Not only is Darth Vader famous for his very striking visual appearance, but that deep bass voice Provided by James Earl Jones will also be always identified with this character. And if you really think about it, James Earl Jones got to play Darth Vader for 45 years. His last performance as Vader, I believe, was in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Incredible for something that started out as a two hour recording session, and a guy who wasn't even credited in the end credits of Star Wars. What an incredible achievement! That then, of course, as time went on. James Earl Jones would be most identified for that character. We must, of course, give a shout-out to the other actors who brought Darth Vader to life. David Prowse and Bob Anderson and many, many others that stepped into the armor. And, of course, Jake Floyd and Hayden Christensen. Darth Vader is one of the great, if not the greatest, or at least most iconic, villain in the history of cinema. And James Earl Jones' imposing voice gave such personality to a character that could have been a one-dimensional villain. So, it's sad that we've lost James Earl Jones. He was 93 years old, though. He wasn't young. And I say that's a life would have lived. And as sad as it is to say goodbye, because of film, those performances are 
immortal, and they will never die. As long as we have them in our possession. That's the joy of cinema, I think. Is that you can capture something for all time. And so I don't think we will ever forget the great James Earl Jones. To end with, I remember in The Lion King, Mufasa tells Simba that the kings of the past look down from the stars on them. I believe that right now, James Earl Jones is looking down from those stars at us. And those are my thoughts on this truly incredible actor. My name is Brennan Moore. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. Thank you for tuning in to Only What You Take With You. Rest in power, James. You are one with the Force, and the Force is with you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.